Scientists in Scotland have announced the discovery of a remarkably well-preserved fossil of a 240 million year old dragon. Welcome back to Paleopedia and meet Dinocephalosaurus orientalis, an ancient species of marine reptile that lived in southern China 240 million years ago during the early Triassic period, right around the exact same time that the first dinosaurs were evolving. Dinocephalosaurus measured in at around 15 feet or about 5 meters in length, but most of that length was taken up by its extremely long neck. The neck makes up a little over half of the entire length of this reptile, making it a very unique looking species. Now if you are a big prehistoric life kind of person like I am, and you've watched a wide variety of prehistoric films and documentaries and things like that, you might actually recognize not this particular species, but another similar species called Tanistrophus. And if you compare the two together, they both look remarkably similar. In fact, they're both closely related to each other. Both Tanistrophus and Dinocephalosaurus are part of the group of reptiles known as the Protorosaurs. Now, it is important to note that while they are closely related to each other, neither Tanistrophus or Dinocephalosaurus evolved from each other. They are sister clades, just closely related to each other. They both evolved their long necks converging Convergent evolution is simply when two different species independently evolve similar traits to each other. Some great examples would be sharks or just fish in general and the ichthyosaurs, the marine reptiles of the Triassic and Jurassic periods that looked like sharks and fishes. In the case of Tanistrophus, its relatives, and Dinocephalosaurus, they convergently evolved their long necks. But how they evolved their long necks is where they differ pretty significantly. The Tanistrophids evolved their long necks by simply extending the length of their individual vertebrae, whereas Dinocephalosaurus simply added more and more vertebrae as time went on. The high number of vertebrae along its back and in its neck gave Dinocephalosaurus a much more snake-like appearance as it swam through the water. Now, Dinocephalosaurus has actually been known for a little over 20 years. It was first discovered back in 2003. So we've known about it for quite a while, and we have found some pretty well-preserved fossils of this species. But the fossil that this newer study is about is one of the most well-preserved fossils for this species. And you can really see how well-preserved it is. I believe pretty much the entire higher skeleton is present in this fossil, which gives us a really good in-depth look at what we believe this animal not only just looked like, but how it probably even behaved. Because of this fossil and other fossils like it, we know that Dinocephalosaurus was an aquatic reptile living along the coastline in shallow seas, feeding on a wide variety of fish. Due to its more flippered limbs, it's believed that Dinocephalosaurus was a much better swimmer than its Tanistrophus relatives, and it probably hunted differently as well. From what I can gather, Tanistrophus likely hunted by lying in wait at the bottom of the seabed, flipping its head up into shoals of fish swimming overhead, whereas Dinocephalosaurus, using its more snake-like neck, could probably weave around the schools of fish, snatching up individuals as it swam. And we know it ate fish, because we have found intact fish skeletons inside some of the fossil body cavities, so we know it was a fish eater. It's also believed that Dinocephalosaurus gave birth to live young at sea, because one of the fossils that we have is of a pregnant female where we can actually see the embryo inside the fossil. Looking at that particular fossil, I don't know how they found an embryotic individual inside this female, but that is what they've determined it is. So another really remarkable find for an early Triassic reptile. Dinocephalosaurus is a very cool and unique looking reptile of the Triassic period, and I highly recommend that you go read this study that I've been talking about. In my opinion, that study, which you can find right here, is an incredibly well put together piece of writing. I believe it's the result of like 10 years of an in-depth look at the many fossils of Dinocephalosaurus that are available. I highly recommend you go read it so you can get a better look at the biology of one of the Triassic period's weirder reptiles. 